Welcome to DCC Train Automation. I'm James. Today we're talking to Andreas, and he's from Lodi in Germany. Lodi is a digital control system for your model railway. Uh, so we're going to talk about all the different products today and explain how they all work. Back in 2019, I was talking to Xander from iTrain, and we were having a few problems with some control systems um, for large layouts. And I decided to try and find out if there was a better solution for people running hundreds of trains on their layouts. Um, Xander suggested that I spoke to Andreas from Lodi because he had a solution that I hadn't heard of. Um, so back then I sent him an email. Um, he quickly responded very keenly. So um, I thought that was a great thing for starters. And uh, we've learned the system and used it in lots of large layouts now with huge success. Um, so we'll talk to him now about the products and why they came about and why he did it. Um, I think there is a reason why he did it, so we'll find out. So Andreas, after I met you and we started talking, um, it's probably best to explain what Lodi is and uh, what it does. And how did it come about? When did you start talking about it? I started uh, with Lodi in 2018. We decided to make another system. We first started with Alice Digital, um, but I sold this company t in 2012 and then came up in 2018 and decided to bring up a new system, uh, uh, totally n not totally different, but um, we want to have Railcom in, we want to have separate booster system, we, we want to have a, a good solution for big layouts, but also for small layouts as well. Um, yeah, that was So was this point. something specific you'd seen in other systems that you didn't like or that weren't working efficiently? Uh, no, I think lots of systems out there work great, but when it comes to one point, um, and th that's, that's the thing why I decided to make Lodi and focus first on the big layouts, um, yeah, I see that uh, it's necessary to do some, something different. So the main drive was for the larger layouts that you noticed some issues with that needed something slightly yeah. different? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So I'd seen this as well, and that's the reason that I got yeah. in touch with Andreas. So when you get larger layouts and there's lots of data flowing, and especially if you want to use Railcom, it has to handle that data, and as that's the one thing I noticed. Especially for the public layouts. The, the, the biggest issue is by, uh, in the public layouts, they have to make money wi with the layout, yeah. and so the system must run the whole day, and that was my, my, my thought. I have to done something for that. Okay, so what was the first product called? Or The first product that we has, uh, had was the Shift Commander, Okay. Um, we started with them, uh, so we split it up our system in three tasks, driving, switching and feedback. Um, and we can actually see that here, so yeah. we can see the three different sections of the system, this, this shows you them. So that was a, so the yeah. shift commander, yeah. is this, yes? And this is the shift commander, this is the interface, or all of three of these uh, first products like the low director, the low shift commander, and the low S88 commander are our interface where you have to plug uh, the operators or the feedbacks or the boosters. So, okay, so what is a shift commander? The what shift, does it do? shift commander is, yeah, he's switching the points. Or so it's controlling accessories on your Yes, layout. all accessory that you had uh, except for servos, sadly not for servos. So we can switch lights in buildings, yes. turnouts, yes. signals, yes. any accessory driven device. And also the room light control can be connected in here. It's okay, so that's, yeah. that's really cool. So this, do you mean the lights just to turn them on or is mm. it more complicated? No, it's more complicated than that. So you have a, a LED stripe on your ceiling and then um, have this decoder on it and the decoder is also connected to the shift commander. Then you have a model time on your computer and these guys are connected to each other. So this is for controlling night and day events? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. so that's so we can change the whole aspect of the room and the layout. Mm. So if you wanted to simulate morning, noon, lunchtime, and evening, you can do that. Um, I have actually seen something that Andreas did where he actually put lighting effects in, so f thunder and lightning. Yeah, um, and a cloud, clouds in the sky. Yeah, you so can also I mean, see that as well. That, really that's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. So that's the switching side of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we've got the driving. You yeah. did that next, did you? The next thing was the driving, or the low director and the booster. Uh, we already had a booster that you can connect on, our, on, the, on the new system. So with the LS Digital stuff, you can also connect it to our new stuff, Lodi Rector and Lodi Booster. Um, yeah, that's, that was the next thing that we done. So the Rector manages the boosters? Yes. And if you have other brand boosters, they'll work with 
there? Yes, yes. We have also a CDE out that you can use on the low director to connecting old booster that you had. But the idea was for the booster to have the uh, intelligence in the system, which means if you if you have a short circuit on your layout, normally everything turns off in the most systems. So with our system, only the uh, booster output that has this short circuit will cut off the power from the track. So I think what Andreas is trying to say is actually the booster isn't just a booster, yeah. it's also district management. Yes. So the booster includes uh, on this version, so there's three different versions of it. Uh, so this is for HO scale, yeah. this normal one. And so smaller it's scale. a five amp booster with two track outputs, two districts off that one booster. And the booster also has full short circuit protection per district yes. built into the one booster. So this eliminates having to have all those extra things that in the UK we use a lot of other mm. equipment to create the districts from the booster. This has that all built into the one booster. So it, it's actually very cost effective too as well. It makes it Yeah, I, I think really so. Good. Yeah. Um, so we just, we'll introduce that and explain it in more depth later on. Mm. Um, and then you came to doing... The feedback system, yeah, and that, that was the hardest part because of the Raycom part. So the feedback is for computer control mainly for you guys who, who don't know what feedback is. So we use this to monitor where the locos are on the layout. And we didn't just want to know they were there, we wanted to know what they were. That would be correct? Yeah, it? and so uh, and seeing the direction of the locomotive, how you put it in on. So Andres has been using Railcom to do this. So Railcom doesn't just send its address, its name, or what it is. It also sends the orientation of the loco. So you've been able to mm -hmm. take that. So when you put the locos on the layout, it knows the orientation of them. Is that right? Yeah, but not if you are uh, Macklin drivers with uh, three, three rails. So, so in the UK, we're lucky we do. yeah. don't really use three rails. So because you know, uh, it makes it's always in the middle. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How, so yeah. that's a really massive benefit to their detection system. But you, I think um, in the detection system, you're also monitoring the current draw yeah, sure. of every feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why, why did you do that? We did the detection um, on the GBM with measuring all the current that you had on the output. So if you had uh, a signal or digital decoder on the track, what's not the locomotive, and you have a higher current, you can change this current in our Lodi programmer to higher the detection level. It's also to getting short circuit detect, de detect on the layout, which is really, really great. So you're seeing exactly on your monitor, on your display, where the uh, short circuit is in this case. Back in January 2022, um, Andreas wanted to develop a throttle, which we call the Lodicon, uh, not just to work with their system, but for many different systems. So ECOS, CS3 from Marklin, Z21, any um, digital system that has a Wi-Fi connection, so this works over Wi-Fi. Um, yeah. So, when did you? What, what was the idea behind this one? Oh, the idea was uh, at this, when we started with Lodicon, we want to create a, a central unit, and um, came up with the new CPU and founding out uh, uh, find this really brilliant display that you see on the Lodicon, and yeah, I put it in, uh, in battery on and rocked around and said, okay, I have to do this hand throttle. <laughs> was the idea of the loading gun. So, yeah, and then we came up and said, okay, it's not only for the loading system, as uh, James, you described it, so you can use it with all the other brands out there, especially if you have network connection on your central unit. And with a lot of throttles, I was aware of when you're using them, the longevity of the batteries. Yes. So yes. that was a big thing that they put in. So with there's a LiPo battery in mm -hmm. it, and it lasts, I've been using it. 10 hours. Yeah, I've actually used it longer than that. But yeah, yeah it's very, very good. If you, uh, if if you, you take on. that as an average, that's a really good, good, good thing for any day running. So um, yeah, it works really well. I hope that was a useful insight into the Lodi product range. Um, look out for the next videos explaining all of the other products individually in more depth, how we configure them and all of those things. Um, if you've got any questions in the comments below please um, or get in touch with us through the website. Thank you very much. Thank you.